Greetings everyone and welcome back to even more of my Dragon Age Origins Let's Play with Mira the Mage. Alrighty, so last time we got a new companion to our group, the Golem Shale. And you know, I took my time to check his skills and talents and you know he is simply too good you know uh, how can I say it like I just wanna say tell you guys that uh, this is my first run and like he is not intended to be here in the first place and that is why I am not going to rely heavily on him or uh, use him uh, too often. Like, you know, I can uh, make use of him, you know, in couple places. Like, I j have just two that come to my mind. Like, you know, um, dealing with revenants, like, you know, ridiculous power versus ridiculous power. And probably take him to the dwarves like you know dwarves and golem combination but other than that I'm not gonna rely uh, heavily on him for this let's play like say I'm not gonna ignore him like I'm still gonna speak to him in camp just don't expect me to bring him too often with me <coughs> yeah guys sorry my throat Anyhow, let's go back to our companions and Liliana is always the first one I am speaking every time I am in camp. And some of you guys might be asking like, uh, why Liliana? Like, uh, what's so special about her? And you know, this is just the matter of the character and the personality like the person uh, I am trying to uh, make from the Mira like she is no by herself she is not too good or too bad it is simply how can I say it she simply faces too much of the temptations uh, which try to lead her on the dark side and Liliana is basically the only ray in of the light in this uh, upcoming darkness, you know, who prevents uh, Mi uh, Mira to become a completely uh, cold-hearted bitch. And you know, her son was simply awesome. How can I possibly turn her down? And you know, I'll do my best not to turn her against me. That's I promise. And you know, Liliana, my sweetheart, I think I might actually have something pretty for you. Yeah, like say this little necklace would be awesome on your pretty neck. Oh, how dear of you. Thank you so much. Ah, oh, you're welcome, my sweetheart. You wanna talk, my sweetheart? Looking for little old me? Um... I'm not planning to learn the bard. I just want to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Hmm. You know, I'd like to know a little bit more about your past and you know to get you known as much as I possibly can so why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle <coughs> ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle and did not set foot in Ferelde until much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Um... 
You sound like she was not happy in Orle. Well, that's what I think at least. She wasn't unhappy. <coughs> we had a good life and she liked Orle well enough. I loved it though. Valroyo was so vibrant, colorful. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecilie let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecilie than my mother. You know... Maybe you can tell me a little bit more about this uh, Cecily lady. So, you know, at least it will give me, you know, the general idea, like, how you were raised. She was an elderly lady, very refined and proper. She had impeccable manners and taste, more so than a lot of Olesian ladies. Cecily was also kind. My mother was unmarried and with child. It was scandalous. And Cecily had every right to turn my mother out. She didn't. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dry flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white feral and wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. Yeah, I remember the flower you I gave her. But hey, now we know a little bit more about your past and your childhood. Thank you for sharing, my sweetheart. Alright, Stan, I think I know exactly what you would like to have. Uh, uh, this nice Unexpected. painting. Thank you. No problem, man. Oh, Coda, uh, Codex. Yeah, paintings. He likes paintings. So, um, if you can s please stop moving around when I'm trying to talk to you. Now, when you're inspired, care to talk to me? You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is unexpected. Uh, callow? You thought I was callow? You sound surprised. You must have heard this before. You'll get over it. Eventually. So... Now, can you tell me why you were caged? I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. Hmm... And... What do you mean by weak mind? That is... complicated. I told you before that I was sent here. I was not sent alone. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us, our own shadows harbored the darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. You know... It sounds something like what I had in Ostagar. I heard the stories of Ostagar. Your kith stood their ground when others fled. No one can do more than that. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead, nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers, and my sword was gone from my hand. Um and 
What did you do? I searched for it. And when that failed, I asked my rescuers what had become of it. Uh... And? I killed them. With my bare hands. I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. Uh, you've panicked over their last blade? That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter unarmed and alone to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. Well, could you search for it? I don't know. If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. Hmm. So, what am I now? Trying to recreate, like, you know, quote, the crime scene or something? Um, where did you fight them? Near Lake Callanhad. Uh, sure. I think we can find it. I know where it is. I mean, like Callan had. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. Ooh, Stana proves plus sixteen. That's not what you see very often. Okay, let's check really quickly Morrigan if she has something else to add. I await your command. Uh I'd like to ask you something. So full of questions, are you? <laughs> um never mind. Alrighty. Okay, Alistair, now we're, when you are again down to neutral. What do you need? Uh, ask you something? Ask away. Uh, Grey Warrens? Such as they are. I uh, guess not. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need? Uh, never mind. Mm. Okay. If it, you want to be that way, sure. Okay, and Zavran. What say you? Um, care to talk? By all means. Do you actually enjoy being an assassin? And why not? There are many things to enjoy about being a crow in Antiva. You are respected, uh, you are feared, the authorities go out of their way to overlook your trespasses, even the rewards are nothing to turn your nose up at. As for the killing part, well, some people simply need assassinating. Or do you disagree? Well... I'm not disagree completely about this, but you know, as long as you've never killed the innocent one, right? Now there is an interesting word, innocent. How many men do you know who can claim to be truly innocent? But if you're talking generalities, such as children and relatives and bystanders and such, never on purpose, but it happens. It's unfortunate, but death comes to us all. If not me, then some wasting disease, or a fall down the stairs, or at the hands of a darkspawn. It's all relative in the end.
You know, to me it sounds like an excuse. Death happens, as we like to say. And when I get paid for it, death happens more often. As far as enjoying the act of killing itself, why not? There is a certain artistry to the deed. The pleasure of sinking your blade into their flesh and knowing that their life is in your hands. Well, I know what you mean though. There are many things I did not enjoy about being a crow, of course. Having no choice, being treated as an expendable commodity, the rules, oh, so many rules. But simply being an assassin, I like it just fine. I will continue to do it if I can, even if I am not a crow. Honestly, could you picture me doing something else? Uh, but don't you have any other skills other than killing? None that I wouldn't get into trouble for performing publicly. Of course, all these thoughts are moot. Chances are still good that you and I will perish, eaten by darkspawn or slain by the crows at some point. Very gruesomely, I imagine. But it is pleasant enough to chat about. Come, let's move on while our boots still have some wear in them. Alright. Okay, let's pet Manji. Yeah. I don't know, it never fails to make me smile every uh, time he does it. But anyhow, Shell, now let's speak to you, even though you, as the Morrigan, you are separated from one another. I see it found some augmentation crystals. I was not even aware it knew about them. Well done. So, what does it think? They don't make me look any wider, do they? I find I'm already too wide as it is. Um... Yeah, they look fine, I suppose. Spoil sport. I think they're lovely. I think it should find some more as soon as possible. I want to glitter from ear to ear, so to speak. Yeah, I kind of figured this thing about the crystals that uh, they go to this golem. And as you can see, I got him like both... Uh, fire crystals, large one and a small one. So, interesting conception, sort of speak. And, well, you guys have probably noticed that the first thing I do is speaking to everyone before, like, you know, making a decision on, like, you know, where to go, that kind of stuff. And, you know, I think we might actually go to the Lake Kalinhad and try to find a Stan Sword and you know probably get him a new deadly weapon if I can say it that way you know and I think after all the talking we've done it might be a good idea to save yeah like, just like this So, let's go to Lake Kalinhat and try to find his sword. Yes. So, Stan, this is yes. for your sake. Morrigan, I still need your support. And Liliana, please. Yep, 